Hi, my name is Nicole, licensed clinician, and we're here talking about everyday things that impact our mental health and fitness. And we are talking about fulfillment. Um, so our previous video, we talked about careers and, you know, if you're not feeling fulfilled in your current career, then, you know, how to potentially find a different career or a job within your current field that you might feel a little bit more fulfilled at. And we're looking at the dictionary definition of fulfillment, which isn't really super helpful because it's the act or state of fulfilling or the quality or state of being fulfilled, completion or realization. Now we think about this in ways of like, oh yeah, like the order was fulfilled, right? Or um, achievement of a goal is like, okay, like, you know, that, that was done. Um, but I, I kind of, I think that there's a distinction to be made because the feeling of being fulfilled has nothing to do with whether or not your goals have been achieved. You can feel completely fulfilled while you're on the process or on that journey of feeling, fulfilling, you know, some of your goals or um, completing or realizing some of your goals. But it's this, this sense of maybe peace could be a, a better word. Um, although I kind of want to also say maybe it's like a driven piece, if that makes sense. Because so it's not like static. Um, it's not like, okay, well, yeah, cool. Like it's not complacency. Maybe it's more along the lines of like a contentment, but then also driving forward, right? Like you feel like, hey, like the path that I'm on is a good path that's going to get me to um, where where I want to be ultimately, but the journey along the way, I'm still I'm still good with. Like this is this is amazing. Like I'm going to be growing as a person along the way. Um, I'm going to be able to do the some different things that I want to do with you know my family or friends or whatever. So we have different areas in life where we can feel fulfillment and different areas where we maybe aren't feeling as fulfilled. So what do we do about that, right? So we're talking about career stuff. Um, let's say we're social animals, right? Um, we've, we've kind of talked about that a little bit before, doing some comparative stuff with the animal kingdom. Um, and we're social animals. We have, we have a pretty complex social structure and we need, we absolutely need, tribe or troop um and so maybe what you can also do is take some stock of the close friendships that you have or that you have had in your life and think about what was helpful for you in that friendship to receive but then also to give so um you know that can go back to love languages because love languages isn't just for romantic relationships love languages is for any type of relationship where you're going back and forth with a person um although you know i mean obviously within within some reason some some love languages are a little bit more romantic in nature than others anyway <clears throat> but just thinking about like hey you know what like when i was in high school i had these friendships and this is what you know I got out of them and this is what I was able to give that kind of made me feel good, right? Because you might not even talk to those people anymore. So you might not know what it was that you offered for them that you know, made them value your friendship. And so you can kind of think along those lines and think like, okay, well, you know, later on college or adulthood and working and whatever, like what are some of the friendships that I've had along the way? Um, and then what types of people do I feel like I need in my life now? Because that can be very different, right, than like high school or college or whatever. So, you know, thinking about like, what do I have to offer other people in a friendship? And then what also do I need to feel fulfilled in a friendship where it's a good back and forth and a good balance? And it doesn't necessarily mean equality, right? Um, my best friend and I, throughout the years, we've both had times where, you know, one of us had maybe more financial success than another or, um, you know, more emotional resources than another. And it was always a, a give and take, right? There were some days where she wanted to go out to dinner and I didn't have any money and she paid for it. And then, you know, a year later, the, the roles were reversed where I was able to kind of be like, hey, you know what, like, 
I'm going to take you out this time. Um, and so, so that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be equal all the time. Um, there is a give and take. Um, but thinking about like what emotional aspects you get or that you need right now, um, life might look very different, right? Like I said earlier, uh, you might be a parent of a toddler and that looks much different than if you're a parent of a teenager or not a parent at all, or, you know, single versus married, like those, all those friendships and what you need out of those friendships change. Um, but you still need the friendships. So I want to challenge you a little bit to either think about people that you can reconnect with from your past that had, um, you know, that you had fulfilling friendships with, or think about people now around you, given your current circumstances and your current friendship needs, um, and your current friendship offerings and think about like, Hey, like who would be somebody that I would want to get to know a little bit better? Like, like who kind of like resonates with me a little bit when I talk to them, um, or when I spend some time with them, when I, when I'm able to see them, um, because it's not everybody, right? It might not be all of your coworkers that you resonate with, but maybe some of your coworkers, you're like, you can have a friendship. Uh, maybe some of your neighbors or, you know, so on and so forth. So I want to challenge you a little bit to think about that and then to start making some of those overtures of, you know, obviously not like creepily, <laughs> right? Um, and it might be easier for some and for others to reach out for a friendship. Um, you know, if you already, if you have a friend that you're close with, maybe like the two of you together can invite somebody else into your friend group, um, and so on, you know, so forth. If you're married, maybe like as a couple, you can invite another couple out to do something, all of those different things. There's a lot of different ways that you can make connection. And if you are isolating yourself and don't know how to even start making a connection, Maybe start thinking of going, go back to that, that, those pages that you wrote for your career and see like, Hey, like, what are some of like the hobbies and passions that I have? Like, can I start volunteering somewhere? Um, is there like a store that sells things specifically for my hobbies that I can like go to? Maybe they have groups or something that I can like join. Um, so get creative and push your comfort zone and tell me about it.